What's going on everyone? Brian Matias here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of my favorite hidden features in Adobe Lightroom. Now, the reason why they're hidden is because you can only access them if you're pressing and holding a certain key on your keyboard while dragging on one of those sliders uh, in the develop module. And actually these features should work in Lightroom Classic as well as Lightroom CC. So everyone who's using Lightroom should be able to make use of what I'm gonna talk about. So the thing about it is, what I'm talking about as far as a particular key, I'm referring to what we call modifier keys. So on Windows, your keyboard, like a PC keyboard, you'll see those modifier keys as Shift, Alt, and Control. On Mac, you'll have it as Shift, Option, and Command. Now, the basic definition of a modifier key is if you press and hold it, it'll change the function of another key while you're pressing and holding it. So easiest example, if you press and hold the shift key while pressing on a letter, that'll make that letter capital, as opposed to if you just press the letter, it'll be lowercase. So that's a modifier key. And in this video, we're focusing on just one modifier key. And that is on Mac, that would be the option key. And on Windows, the equivalent is Alt. So because I'm a Mac user for the rest of the video, just to make it easier, I'm just gonna reference option. If you're a Windows user and you hear that word, train yourself to think Alt. So if I say Option Drag, you're gonna press Alt Drag and it will give you the exact same functionality. Now you may be wondering why are these tools kind of hidden? You know, why do you have to kind of know to press a certain key while dragging or manipulating a slider? Part of that has to do with user experience. So imagine if every single possible function within Lightroom was laid out with sliders and buttons and all that stuff, that would really make the user experience, I would say, very poor. The, the goal is to give you all of the most important tools, the most powerful tools, uh, and have them available for you right there. And as you become more kind of comfortable and seasoned with the product, you start to learn of these little shortcuts. So, uh, you know, Photoshop is riddled with them. A lot of applications have those kinds of shortcuts. Sometimes if you go into your menu and you press and hold on one of the modifier keys, you will actually see some of those menu items change. Uh, it's just one of those things that you have to know about. And I've been using Lightroom since the beta days. And in that time, I've, I've become very comfortable with the product. So what I wanna do is jump over to the desktop over here, and I'm gonna show you a handful of my favorite hidden features that pretty much only use the Option or Alt key while dragging on certain sliders. And once you get used to them, you're gonna question how you ever worked without them because in some cases they make editing and fixing your photos so much more powerful. So let's head over here and I wanna show you some examples so you can check it out for yourself. All right, so this is Adobe Lightroom Classic. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at three key kind of hidden features, all using the Option or Alt key with Lightroom. And I broke them down into three different images. We'll start with the first one, which is gonna be about fixing tone. Second one's gonna be about split toning. And the third one's gonna be about sharpening. Now, as we go from image to image, I wanna kind of build on it. So in the first one, we're just gonna use the hidden features to fix the tone kind of like your highlights and your shadows. Then the second image, we will go and we will fix tone. Then we'll do some split toning. And then the third image, we'll fix tone, split tone, and then fix the sharpening using these hidden features. So with that, this first photo here, I took it uh, in Detroit. It was an abandoned school. And when you look at this photo, so this photo typically is ripe for HDR. You know, if you look at it, uh, there are super bright areas and super dark areas. You've got bright areas here in the windows and dark areas throughout. And you can see in the histogram, if you hover over these warnings here, basically when you hover over uh, a lit triangle, it'll show you where you're blowing out your highlights, where you're clipping your shadows. Um, it's The shadows are a little bit harder to look over here. Um, as I hover over, you see how they get blue. So not as much in terms of the shadows, but definitely highlights. So this is how I typically fix tone. Um, I'm going to start with exposure and open it up just a little bit. Usually what I'll do is I'll just brighten the image overall. And now I have, you can see here still obviously highlights and shadows. So watch what happens if I press and hold on the option or alt key while dragging on highlights. 
You see here what happens? You actually see the areas in the image that are blown out. So if I start dragging to the left, what I want to do is get to the point where just barely anything of those white dots are visible. If a few of them are visible, don't worry. You don't want to have to crush your highlights or your white point so that the bright parts are actually gray and muddy. Uh, that's a, a kind of a common thing that people do when fixing tone is uh, you, you tend to you know, you want to wrangle it back so much that you end up crushing it all together. So uh, here we'll go here uh, with the highlights. We're also going to press and hold the option key and drag on the white point to bring the actual white point in. And what I'm doing here is I'm getting it to the point where uh, the histogram no longer reports that if you look here, the highlight is no longer clipping that is off. And you'll see that we actually have some detail in the windows that weren't there before. So now let's do the same thing with shadows. So with shadows, let's start with the black point. I'll press and hold the option key while dragging out. And you see there's not that much. And I usually go about to about plus 20. I don't go too far with the black point. And then I'll go to the shadows. And I'll do the same thing. I'll open up the shadows until we have no more of a warning in the clipping area for the shadows. So right now, as far as tonality goes, we've got all of the data brought in to the photo, which is really what I want. And again, you can tell that because the warnings are gone. And if I press the backslash key to give you an original, I mean, look at that. Look over here in the windows, uh, that was the original. And then we were able to get some good detail brought in. Now, now here's something <laughs> important point I wanna make. Just because this is showing you how to kind of bring tone back in doesn't mean that it's gonna restore all of the information. Even if you're shooting raw, which I highly recommend you do. Um, if you don't have that information here, uh, you can't really do much with it, which is why in these situations, uh, HDR and tone mapping is really important because there you can actually use actual pixel information. Now, you know, to show you what I meant, a lot of people will bring their kind of white point down and their highlights all the way down. And you can start to see that it's starting to get a little gray. Watch when I bring the highlights back up, how they get more of that kind of pure white. And that's what you're looking for. You really don't want your highlights to look gray. That's kind of a sign that you're really trying to bring the tone back uh, where it doesn't exist or where you're trying to kind of make something out of nothing where there's not enough data. And so with that, we took a look here of how we're using kind of the option or alt key for tones. Let's move on to the next photo here and we're gonna fix tone, but we're also going to use split toning. And split toning is a, a really cool kind of stylization effect. I'll walk you through it. So here, first things first, let's, like I said, open up the exposure just a little bit. You can see that we are blowing out our highlights just a little bit on the top over here and clipping shadows kind of right over here in the foreground. So same as before, press and hold the option key. Let's drag highlights until we don't have any of a warning anymore. We'll do the same thing with shadows. Let's bring the shadows out uh, and also the black point out. And so here we have now reached a good tone. Uh, you can even bring the highlights, or I'm sorry, the white point down a little bit more, just like that. So here, nice, evenly exposed photo. And if there was a theme in terms of fixing tone, that would be it, is you wanna get your photo to be evenly exposed so that there's not anything that's overly bright, not anything that's overly dark. Uh, and then you can start stylizing. And there, if you wanna make it overly bright or dark, that's fine. But at the starting point, at kind of the starting line, you want to be evenly exposed. So now let's move on to split toning, which is another panel in develop. It's right over here. And split toning is basically uh, the ability to specify in Lightroom a hue or color value for the highlights and the shadows. You can use them together. You can use one or the other. Um, it's typically used uh, in conjunction with certain color theories where if you have something kind of like yellow or warm in the highlights, you would put a blue or something cooler in the shadows. That typically plays off really well. It's the most common way that I use split toning, uh, and, but it works on certain images. It doesn't work very well on every type of image, but I'll show you here how I use it. So you can see here with split toning, I mentioned there are the highlights and the shadows, two sections, and they both have the same exact sliders, hue and saturation. So hue is the color. Now watch, if I drag over, just dragging with nothing, nothing happens. You don't know what's going on. The only way that you really can tell what's going on with the color is if the saturation slider's up. So as I drag it up to 100, you see that whatever 
color the, the sliders on, that is the color that's going to be applied to the highlights. And as I drag over, now I can see that preview. But I don't want to necessarily have to drag the saturation slider to 100 every time. So here is where the option key or the alt key comes in. If I press and hold on that option key while dragging on the hue slider, notice how saturation is at zero, but I still get that 100% preview. So this is how I split tone is I drag over and I get to a place where at 100%, I think it looks really good. And around this color here between kind of yellow and green looks good. Now I can take my saturation slider and just add, you don't have to add a lot. You can go kind of like right around there. And then the same thing with the shadows. If I press and hold on the option key while dragging, I'll get it kind of to a blue right around there. And I can start adding some of that. And then there is the balance slider. And this allows you to kind of bias towards one side or the other. So if you go to the right here, it'll go more towards highlights. If you go to the left, it biases it towards the shadows. So I'm going to kind of bring it a little bit more to the right here. And you can see if I toggle split toning on and off, see just kind of a subtle change, not much, but it is a stylistic change, which when used, uh, you know, sparingly and effectively, it can do some really nice things to your photo. So with that, we have covered using the option key to fix tone to identify where you are actually blowing out highlights and clipping shadows. And then we just used it to apply split toning without having to fiddle with the saturation slider. Now the third and final hidden feature that I want to show you has to do with sharpening. So sharpening is one of those things that I typically do at the very end. It's one of the last steps that I take. Usually it's a vignette and then sharpening or sometimes sharpening and vignette, but I say that for the very end. So let's go here. We'll bust through applying the toning fix and then the split toning. And then I'm going to show you how to use sharpening. All right. So let's get up here. Uh, same thing as before. Let's open the exposure just a little bit. Um, and we have, I, because I opened up the exposure, I introduced a little bit of blowing out the highlights, especially up here where the sun was visible. So again, let's press and hold the option or alt key. And you can see there is the blown out areas. We'll bring the highlights over a little bit. And I'm also going to bring the white point in just a little bit. And that's okay. Now, remember, as I showed you, you see, there still are some of those dots up there. Don't worry about that. You don't, again, want to necessarily just get rid of all of it. If there are a few dots, that's okay. But what I mostly look for is on the histogram, I want to make sure that the warnings are not illuminated. So now we still have the shadows to deal with, and you can see they're over on the left there. So I'm going to take my black point, press and hold the option key. I'm going to bring it out just until it disappears. And then I'm going to take care of it with the shadows and we are looking good. Now, effectively what you're doing by kind of wrangling in some of those highlights and shadows is you're somewhat reducing your contrast just a little bit. So if you want, you can go ahead and add a little bit of contrast back and then we can go over to split toning. Same as before, let's press and hold the option key. And just like before, I'm going to go kind of to the yellows over here and bring it over. And then we'll do the same thing with the shadows kind of to the blues and open up the saturation. Now you can always just uh, flip them around if you want to see what it looks like with the shadows warm and the highlights cool. It doesn't look as good in my opinion. So I'm just going to undo those. Uh, and then we can bring the balance towards the highlights a little bit. And now let's just say that this was done. Let's say I didn't want to do anything else and I was ready to kind of finish this up. Now it's time to sharpen. Sharpening is one of those things that is so easy to mess up or rather maybe not easy to mess up, but easy to overdo. And I'll show you why a lot of times when people sharpen, they go here to their photo and they just kind of like add sharpening. And that's that problem with that is it's easy to over sharpen and you'll know you've probably seen your fair share of overly sharpened photos. They just look a little too crispy, like super crispy. And that's not good. You want it to be just the right amount of crispiness. And to make sure that you have that, uh, you want to pay attention to the areas of your photo that are sharpest that have the most detail. So this is how I do it. First, I'll usually kind of zoom in on an area that I know should be sharp, like this rock here. The other way that you can do it is you can take this little target under detail 
and then hover over an area and it'll kind of give you a magnification. Now, like before, you remember I showed you how people will just drag the amount slider? There's actually a more effective way to see what sharpening is doing to your photo. So we'll go to the amount slider here and like all the other sliders we've used, I'm gonna press and hold the option or alt key and start dragging. And as soon as I press, you can see how the image turns grayscale. And the reason for that is because it's easier for the eyes to see detail when color is removed. So by presenting a grayscale image, you can see the sharpening effect. And so watch as I start bringing the sharpening amount over, you can see the detail in the rock coming out. Now, the problem is when you go too far, you see, like, look over here in this part of the rock. I'm going to drag out. It doesn't look as bad here, but when you get way out, that gets a bit too crispy. So really where we're looking at is like right around there, maybe 65%. And that is okay. There's still one more step. And that is in Lightroom, for the most part, everything you do is global. So when I use that amount slider, it applied sharpening everywhere. But do I really need sharpening in the smooth water, right? Or if you have a sky and it's just a blue sky, do you really need to sharpen a blank blue sky? No, you don't. So that's why there is a masking slider right here. But the thing is, if you just use the masking slider as it is, I mean, you, you really don't know what it's doing, right? I mean, it's, it's hard to see what the effect is. And this is where I'd say the probably the most effective use of the option key uh, that you'll find in Lightroom, or at least one of them. Watch what happens when I press and hold the option key while dragging. So from the start, it's white, which means that sharpening is applied everywhere. For those Photoshop users out there, this is what a mask is, you know, white reveals and black conceals. So as I start dragging to the right, it starts to intelligently mask out the sharpening. And what I want is for all the smooth areas, specifically the water in this case, to be black. So as I go here, you can see how sharpening is really only applied to all of the high contrast edges, pretty much everything that has detail. So if it has water and it's smooth, you don't want sharpening there, so let's mask it out. But if it's a rock or a tree or a leaf, we want that in there. So usually what I do is I bring this masking slider over until I see a rough outline or a sketch of the photo. And so when I let go, now I know that the sharpening is being applied only to the areas where it really should be applied to and masked out of the smooth areas. And so there you have it. Those are kind of like my three favorite, most used hidden tools in Lightroom using the option or alt key modifier. It's super powerful. And once you kind of get it as part of your workflow, you're going to think like, how did I ever not use it before? So do me a favor, leave comments below. Let me know if you found these tips helpful. Did you know about them? Are there other kind of hidden things that uh, you find useful that maybe I don't know about? Always learning. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe to get notified for all of my future videos. All right, everyone, I'll see you on the next one.